Hi, everyone, and welcome to Fresh from the Studio. Um, Women in Their Works artist members share what they're working on now with you. Um, today, we'll hear from Court Lurie, Elvia Perrin, and Lars Woodhill. Each artist will give us a look at their recent work and share their art making processes and practice. Each artist will have 10 minutes to present. And at the end of each presentation, we'll, at the end of all the presentations, we'll open it up for questions and comments um, for all the artists. Feel free to chat your questions and comments during the presentations. And then um, we'll share, we'll come back together and share at the end. We're so thrilled to have these three artists. Um, we're gonna begin tonight with Court. I'm gonna stop sharing and let you take over. Hi everyone. Thanks for um, thanks for coming out tonight to join us and thank you to women and their work. Thank you to Diane and Ellie. Um, thank you to Mars and Elvia. And I'm excited to be here with y'all. Um, I'm gonna look at the time. 606 so we got 10 minutes and uh i'm gonna be very cognizant of that um so this is my one of my studios i have a studio um i'm renting a house and i have transformed the house into a an art studio basically and so there's three bedrooms and they're all studios, and then there's a big converted garage area. It's where I do my flat work um, when I'm working on flat pieces. So I think what we'll do tonight is uh, I'll talk a little bit about who I am and why I'm talking about my work. Um, I think I'll share with you my artist statement and um, talk a little bit about what I'm creating and what I'm building in, um, in, my, in my personal and professional life um, that has to do with community. And uh, I'm really excited about it. So I think I'll just dive in. Oh, I have this cool presentation that I made. Let me share the screen. Okay. So. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me get to the beginning. And here we go. This is a this is a, a new newer piece called Wyoming. It's really large. It's about 48 by 96, I think. Um, I just had it stretched and framed out. I'm going to a show in Dallas next week. Um, anyway, that's my website and you can find uh, anything you want to know about my, my work or my life or whatever on there. Um, please feel free to reach out to me and any questions that you have later. Um, I put my email at the end, the very last slide. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm literally just going to kind of sift through these photographs. There's a bunch of them and talk about what is important right now for me as an artist in um, Austin, in Texas, in the country, in the world, um, what it means to be a creative person right now in <laughs> a time where there's so much just insanity at the helms. Um, how do we make sense of it? How do we find our voice in it? How do we use our voice in it? And how do we use uh, um, these platforms to support, encourage, and inspire each other? Um, so hopefully this talk will be inspiring in some way. Um, and yeah. So here we go. Okay, that's my Topo Chico bottle there. Um, <laughs> oh. Okay, so I'm multitasking, which I rarely do, but <clears throat> this is my artist statement. Um, 
the power of vulnerability of witnessing <clears throat> and being witnessed, excuse me, is an invitation and often a catalyst for the deepest and most impactful connection. For me, this is a gift of art. Intimately greeting the unknown with veracity and a nod to risk becomes a beacon into the collective human experience. When we tune and refine ourselves to our highest, purest, and most authentic expression, our, fr our frequency radiates out and changes lives. We touch people sometimes that we don't even know we touch. Simply by walking through our lives emerges gratitude, grit, grace, wonder, and ease when I'm not even looking, just sharing myself. It's a picture of my palette. Um, When I allow the present moment to be my guide, to meander the uncharted path to explore its pure expression, I am entering a portal. This journey through the creative process opens a channel of communication that is ubiquitous. It is the human being moved. New language is revealed and the artwork lives into the world as a gift. This unwavering dedication to curiosity and discovery births a complex dialogue that is revealed inside the paintings. The inventions leave marks of a human hand navigating itself through a desire to initiate contact with something visceral, magical, mystical, and sacred, carnal, primitive, and raw. I tune to the frequency of receiving and listen. I move when I am moved. I enter and leave the canvas with deep reverence and grace. Each piece is an offering. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna put my notes down and um, continue on with this little slideshow and just talk with y'all. Um, and let, let me check the time and see where we're at. Okay, we got four minutes, cool. So um, the other thing I wanted to do was walk you around a painting. Um, so I think I'll just share a little bit about my practice in the studio. Um, I have several rooms that I work in and I work on several pieces at a time. Um, <clears throat> But I think what I really want to say is that um, art has been and painting has been a journey for me to find my voice, to find my ability to express myself in a way where, you know, I've had a life full of, um, full of trauma and full of anxiety. And I've had to really work really, 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 really hard to overcome some of that. Um, and painting has always been a place where I can go to literally um, almost like process through really intense um, emotional times. And I think I, I feel really, really grateful and really, really lucky for choosing to take a leap of faith um, that I did 20 years ago and quit my day job and decide to um, paint and see what, see what it's like to be a painter and see if I could make a living as a painter and see if I could be successful in um, expressing myself through, the, through, through pursuing a path that is not necessarily um, encouraged. <laughs> Uh, I don't think people necessarily encourage their children too much to be painters, um, or at least it's not practical in our in our culture. Um, so anyway, there's um, there's some more paintings here that I'm showing you, and 
think what's really important that I want to share, those are photographs I take of really close up. Um, I shoot really close up shots of rust that's peeling off of trucks and train cars. And um, I get really close up and find these abstract shapes that are really interesting. These are a couple of drawings I did while on residency in Wyoming. Um, this is a newer piece, a little bit larger piece, also new. So when I start a piece, I, I always start with pencil work underneath and I, I will take three or four pencils sometimes and put them in both of my hands. And I will literally just start moving around the canvas with all of these pencils and I'm writing things and I'm, um, I'm putting down what's really important to me. And 99% of what I start with on the canvas, you don't see at the end of the piece. Um, it's hidden underneath. And yeah, let me see what else we got. There are um, some studio shots. I think we got to wrap it up here pretty soon. So this is interesting. Um, that is so I used to be part of an art community called Art Post, and this is um, the brewing, the Brewers, what's it called? Brewers Palace or something, the Brewers, Brewers Table. Um, and they built a restaurant in the spaces that we used to use as a studio. Oh, yes. And so it was just funny to see that flipped around. Um, Anyway, thanks y'all. I, uh, I appreciate the time. I have no idea how I filled that space and I hope um, some of it was interesting for you. Um, thanks for letting me be here and I'll let me get to my email. So you, there we go. If anybody wants to be in touch, I'm creating a, a women's art collective, women and non-binary artists. So please uh, get in touch. And thanks so much for letting me be here. Thanks so much, Cord, for sharing your work um, with us. It's super interesting. And I'm sure we'll have questions at the end. But for now, um, next up is Elvia. Let's see. Hi, everyone. I'm Elvia Perrin. Um, thank y'all for being here. I'm going to be sharing my screen. Are we able to see? Okay. So um, this is my studio here in Austin. I primarily work in print. Um, I'm aware that I'm super lucky to be a printmaker who has their own press and their own space to work. And that has given me just the opportunity to, to work alone, which I know a lot of artists working in print don't have that um, opportunity. Um, I am basing this talk um, on being creative, staying connected and collaborating virtually uh, during the pandemic. I think most artists you know, enjoyed the isolation and the non-committed to uh, the art market, but it was also a time to sort of reevaluate, you know, how, how I was um, being in the art world. Um, I primarily work in print media, which is um, printmaking, working in intaglio, copper etching, and um, solar plate etching. Um, during the pandemic, we were, you know, in lockdown and resources were, were you know, sparse and, um, we were kind of tied to home. And I think that really influenced my work for the last like year and a half. Um, my accessibility to resources got cut short along with everybody else's. So I started, you know, 
going to old artwork and cutting those up and rethinking and reevaluating and uh, using this old work um, as collages. Um, <clears throat> I tried to stay busy kind of working um, not from my studio, but from my home base, you know, I felt the need to kind of stick close to home. Um, my studio is about 10 minutes away from my actual house. Um, so just using that old work to create new work um, was really instrumental for me over the last year and kind of re-seeing things that I had done in the past. Um, also just audience, like we did, we were lacking galleries. We were sort of um, relying on social media and um, the internet to sort of market ourselves. Uh, so work became smaller. I started working on this little press I had gotten on Facebook and basing my work from home. Um, that really was different. Um, working from that large press that you saw in that first photo and, and shifting towards this little small uh, tabletop that I'm able to work from my office. Um, I was still really being influenced by architecture and my surroundings. Um, these are uh, photographs I took from, you know, wood structures that were in concrete that eventually became um, lithographs. And I also switched to marketing for myself. Since the galleries were closed, I, you know, was making art for your Zoom meetings and posting on Instagram and really reaching out to um artist and art uh, interior designers that I had worked with in the past. Um, <clears throat> so during this time, I, you know, acquired about 12 commissions and that really was helpful for me to have that audience, to have those little projects of distraction. And this is an etching uh, created from 20, um, 20 single etchings that became a mural um, installed in a bank in Nebraska. I also started reaching out to designers I had worked with before. Um, social media became almost uh, vital to um, showing my work and sort of staying connected and feeling like I wasn't just making art to put in my flat files. Um, so tagging people using um, just Facebook and Instagram to sort of um, create my own online <laughs> gallery, which was kind of fun. Um, and that kind of resulted in some new um, retail um, partnerships and some hotel um, acquisitions. So my prints are now, you know, 90 prints are in these 90 hotel and these 90 rooms, um, which was kind of nice. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I know. Um, and also um, hotels here in Austin and Dallas. So who were able to get some original work. So um, I was, it was nice being able to uh, make art for these hotels. Um, I also created a space on my website for licensing art. So collaborating with retail spaces and partnering with companies, um, I made it really easy for people to find me um, as an artist since galleries were closed. Um, I really had to market myself. And so that was beneficial this past year and a half when it was like uncertain whether galleries were gonna open again and how was I gonna you know, support being an artist. Um, I was happy to also just be a part of a Weight Watchers commercial since I've been a Weight Watchers member for about 13 years. So um, all this sort of branding of myself, marketing of my art um, sort of paid off. But uh, really, you know, it was vital for me to get back into the studio, to think about, you know, life after the pandemic. Um, what was, you know, how was I going to feel? Um, shifting back to making larger work, um, getting back into, you know, discussing with galleries about exhibitions. So this was um, my block piece, which is uh, a mixture of lithography, which is um, a planar process which allowed me to frottage that grate and combine it with that flat surface with this solar plate um, that was layered on top. And so this became sort of this minimalist combination of 
flat and three-dimensional surface. I also continued with um, this weld and post pieces um, that were created from copper etchings um, that were shaped, uh, hand cut and shaped um, into these large forms and then printed onto paper. And with this piece, um, Colin, I explored, uh, this is a lithograph as well, sort of exploring form and this three-dimensional space. Um, but getting back to drawing, um, with carbon, I am um, using this painting on acetate and combining this etching surface um, to create this piece. And then lately, this week, which I have been returning back to uh, my collages that I've done in my sketchbook and that have created into these small little etchings for um, Etsy, but recreating them into these larger pieces that I'm hoping to exhibit um, on a grand, grander scale. These are actually collagraphs, which the plates are made from wood veneers uh, glued onto plexi and then coated with this akua, which gives you a value and it prints like an etching. And so this is what I've been printing this week. Um, it allows you to sort of work a little bit larger. It gives you the flexibility of like surface on this large scale. And then you're able to cut things uh, a little bit more with ease than with copper. Um, and this last form um, is something that I'm, exp I'm exploring as well. Um, I still haven't created the background for this piece, but um, I'm hoping to do that within the next few weeks. So that's where I am now, uh, back in the studio, trying to create um, some new work um, and hopefully getting back into the real art world. And that's it. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Great. Thank you so much. And third artist for tonight, Mars Woodhill. Thank you. First of all, I want to say how impressed I am with both Court and Alvia. Thank you so much. Um, let me share my screen. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, good evening. I'm Mars Woodhill. Um, I so appreciate women in their work, everything they do, and I'm thrilled to participate in this edition of their Fresh from the Studio. Thank you. Um, what we have, this is a photo of my art studio. Uh, for the last eight years, I've lived in the Texas Hill Country. I'm surrounded by nature, which has even more informed my work, which was already based on nature. So um, this has been a, a, a wonderful experience in my life. Um, oops. Okay, well, I skipped a slide, but that's okay. So for the last 15 years, I focused on painting. My paintings were fluid mediums um, and I on purpose did not wanna use man-made tools. Uh, my goal was to have the process be as close as I could to the creation of the earth, which are fluid dynamics, um, movement, materials obstructing each other, pressure within, blowing up, and as you can see what that process does, I have implosions, I have striations, I have explosions, I have swirls and geodes, more swirls, I have softer swirls, but it's all very geomorphic. It, um, this is just what came out of me. I was so interested in the earth. I love rocks. Um, a major passion of mine. I have a huge rock garden. Um, so for instance, this one looked very much, very earthy, very meaty in the middle, very geomorphic. And 
occasionally there would even be something that to me looked like a new creature. And I always love that. So here's my door to my art studio, my magic door. So about three years ago, living in the rural areas, surrounded by all of this, um, I had a new goal. I suddenly, I, I was trying to come up with a way to integrate man more into the equation for number one, um, and also to use some of the natural materials which I encounter on my daily life. Um, and in addition, to create a situation whereby the viewer could become more a part of the actual artwork. So I came up with the idea of using the elements of nature, an ancient concept, uh, 700 BC by the Chinese, um, the Egyptians, India, all over the world. The um, ancient cultures were trying to understand the earth. And it was kind of the beginning of science. I mean, it's like, let's classify what we see. Um, and in their eye, they could see that all of these elements combined in different ways, interacted, made each other change, and they were an explanation for everything. So I went, wow, this is pretty exciting. Let me do this. So I started working on new series. So Okay, here's the art studio, kind of at the beginning of this hyperdrive motivated period I went into, which actually was before the pandemic and just increased during that. Uh, so here's my studio on the property. Here is my doggy. At this point, you can see my um, costume was a little bit unused, looked like a mummy. Um, this was three days ago. This is the studio that now stands. I was lucky. I have a commission in the front, 72 by 72 painting. Um, but all around it, while I wait for it to dry months, um, I have series number 10 going, Elements of Nature, series one, in which I'm reworking some of the pieces. Um, so here's series one. I'm going to go through this a little fast. Um, here is an installation that I just did within the last week, uh, right here where I am at the moment. This is a gallery space in which I'll be putting on a self-artist exhibition, um, hopefully not a couple of months. Uh, I'm calling it the Source of the Force. The various series are elements of nature. And this particular, oh, so the space, my partner Mark, built a workshop for himself. And this is the upstairs portion of his workshop. And he was very gracious to say, yes, you can do this. Um, so close up of the wall work there. You can see this is Texas Madrone bark, juniper leaves, um, oak, moss, I mean, twigs, all kinds of wonderful things, which I've loved. Um, and then I have the reflective pieces, which to me, probably represent man, uh, maybe our technology today, maybe ourselves, but certainly when you look at the artwork, you are a part of it. Um, here is series three. I'm working on five very large sculptures of the elements. I have two completed. This is our, here's fire, uh, Brady once again, loving art. Um, <laughs> so this is the last series that I completed. Um, I love these because what happened is I came up with the idea. And when I went back into my inventory, 2018, I had just happened, the universe provides, had just happened to do five paintings in the perfect color palettes for what I next wanted to do. So I'm gonna skip ahead and come back. I took each painting. So here is the earth painting on the right. Um, here is it today. I cut out the centers and put reflective material where the center used to be. And then kind of drop down another creation from the same thing. Um, there's a small sculpture which integrates the center of each painting into it. So it will obviously belong in the exhibit. I have two of those completed. So this is all very new work within the last two years. Um, it is very different, much more three-dimensional than what I've ever done in the past. But at the same time, it 
you know, same artist. You can see that. Um, oh, and this is adorable, amazing. My grandchild, I have several, uh, Cora, who saw this sculpture a week ago and her reaction was exactly what I was seeking. She went, whoa, and she went, I am a part of it. Am I a rock? You know, and I went, bingo. That was the reaction I was seeking. I wanted the viewer to go, me and nature, we're in this together. So anyway, um, ah, okay. So I was kind of quick, huh? So I, <laughs> I could take the camera around the, the space if we like, but um, basically a huge huge bravo to women in their work for everything they do. Um, I'd also like to thank supporters, you know, the volunteers that we just met at Red Dot were wonderful. Um, and all of the other supporters who give other resources. Um, if you're interested in viewing this exhibit or contacting me in any way, obviously, website, email me, I'm on Instagram. Um, so I guess that's it. Um, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for sharing what you're working on in your studios right now. It's really interesting to see all of the directions that you have gone in your separate studios. I wanted to go ahead and give everyone um, else in the audience a chance to share anything that they have coming up, any exhibitions or anything like that. Also feel free to ask questions to any of the three artists that presented today, Court, Elvia, or Mars, um, and share any info or anything in the chat. And while I'm giving you all a second to pull that up, I'll let you know that upcoming at Women in Their Work, we have a Rahab El Sadek's Pattern Language opening on the 23rd of October from six to nine. And then that exhibition will run through December 16th. And you can find more info about that on our website. I'll put the link in the chat. Um, I have a show coming up um, in Dallas next weekend. It's called The Other it's a uh, survey of um, artists from all over the world, actually. And it's wow. um, curated all independent artists. Um, it starts on Thursday, October 1st, and it goes through the 24th. And it's at Dallas Market Hall. And if anybody wants free tickets, let me know because I can get them. And um, yeah. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm going to plug the studio coming up in November because um, it's uh, probably the most influential or impactful um, art studio event of the city for sure. Um, and this year they're bringing together the East and the West tours at the same time. Um, of course, Big Medium produces this event with uh, lots of partners. Um, I'm actually on the creative standard committee with at Big, at Big Medium and we're talking a lot about um, what, what we're gonna do kind of with this new format of um, online <laughs> and uh, online life, Zoom life. Um, yeah. Oh, and I'm I'll giving a link to the other fair in the chat there if anyone wants to check that out. And then we also had a question for Mars. Um, Erica says, Mars, can you say more about your process? How do you create those amazing pieces? Um, the, the new pieces or the older paintings? Oh, let's talk about the sculptures. Okay, so the sculptures uh here is earth oops here is earth um the base of the earth is foam 
Uh, it does have a wood armature um, limited because I want to be able to handle them. I want to be able to move them myself and not necessarily rely on other people. Um, when I build the large sculptures, I realize that doors are 36 inches in general. Um, I don't want to, it, yeah. so there's some side that will fit through a 36, 34 inch door, let's say. Um, so I'm watching that on my dimensions. Uh, this is foam. It, you can see I can move it. Um, wow. It's fun. Yeah. And then the um, hemispheres are acrylic mirrored hemispheres. Um, if you do public art, you typically, this would work outside. However, you would have to create it slightly different. Um, so I do, you can buy colored things like this. They're not inexpensive. However, I really wanted the option of changing the glazes. Uh, so I glaze each piece. Um, they are not perfect because man has touched them. So um, yeah, so they're just all a little different. Um, it, it took a lot of experimentation. Um, I felt like the mad scientist for about a year with trying to do this new series. Um, I was trying to do uh, just glaze after glaze and to get the right color and to get them to really kind of, I don't know, vibrate and sparkle, like the right color it was very difficult for me, but um, I've managed it on most of them. Um, so yeah, so the two big sculptures are, hold on, where's fire? Yeah, they're foam, mostly. Uh, the, the balls, the, the, I kind of thought of them as, you know, kind of pieces of the cosmos. Um, they are based on the round canvases and then the materials are applied to those, sorry. Um, these are of course paintings, which I had and I cut. So they're based on canvas. The acrylic portion is acrylic mirror in which I have glazed. It was very important to me to integrate the materials in, let me see if I can get you where this metal shows, okay. To integrate the metal in with the glazes and with the mirror. Um, I just liked that effect. Um, it was a much harder process. It would be much easier to let me glaze this mirror and stick it under this and then glue it on. But I, I was adamant that it all had to happen at one time. So, you know, I think that's quite a bit about the process, but if she has a specific question, she could reach out. <laughs> sure, thanks. Yeah, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to unmute and ask them or type them into the chat and I can ask them for you. I'm curious, um, Elvia, I wanted to ask you about your printmaking process. Um, is, are you creating images? I don't know much about printmaking. Are you creating images layer upon layer upon layer upon layer, like a mono print or a mono type? Um, yeah, <laughs> or I don't know what, can you tell me a little bit about it or tell us about it? Yeah, like, um, it's funny because when I saw your work, it looks a lot like monoprinting. I'm like, what is their degree in? Because yeah, your work looks like layering. It looks like monoprinting. Um, I do a lot of things. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not spontaneous person. So I don't, you know, go into the studio and start painting on Plexi and then print and then react that way. I tend to have a plan and it usually starts with drawing or collage, uh, photographs that um, become solar plates, which is a process that you can use transparencies to uh, shoot onto polymer plates. Um, it's a great non-toxic way of working. And then they just etch like, um, they etch like intaglios. Um, I also, you know, work directly into copper and I do work in layers. And so sometimes I'll, print something and then like that last image of that abstract form, that was just one layer, but I have intentions of, of going back and creating um, 
some background uh, processes to kind of you know create layers in time. So sometimes I'll make a form and then react to it. Um, but I start with the plan and then it shifts. It usually starts with drawing or sculpture, collage. Once I get to the studio, nothing is predictable. Like things don't happen the way you envision them. And so you, you do have to shift as an artist. And, um, but that's kind of why I like printmaking because I'm a bit of a control freak and all my good intentions kind of get, you know, distracted or delayed in printmaking because of the process, because there's um, so much room for error. Um, your etch doesn't go right, your, the layering doesn't seem like what's in your head. And so, um, yes, I, I start with the plan, but definitely being in the studio, um, being able to layer in person makes all the difference in creating my work. Did that answer your question, Court? <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. I'm I'm so envious of I've done residencies before where there are printmakers and I just I want to roll that I I want to roll that plate so badly and like <laughs> but I have no idea how how you do that. I think I should take a printmaking class sometime, I think. I know. I used to teach at Flatbed many years ago when I got out of grad school. That was one of my first jobs was to print and it is worth taking a workshop because your work, the layering of your work, whether it, you know, you have some wonderful color mixtures, but you also combine texture and then these little beautiful line drawings. I'm like, that is printmaking. That is that combination of, you know, flat surface color and then that mark making. So mm -hmm. you should definitely take a class because I think you'll find inspiration, but just another language for speaking. Um, something that's different about printmaking is our layering, you can use translucency, which allows you to see the colors underneath and allows you to see paper and no mm -hmm. other thing. So take a class. <laughs> yeah, like those, the yellow pieces, the ones with the yellow. Yeah. Those were transparencies, right? Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love that. I love take a class. Well, thank you so much for talking a little bit more about your process as well. It sounds very different than Mars' process, but it's very interesting to hear these different mediums in action. Um, I think we have time for another couple of questions. Um, I had there's one more for you in the chat court. Um, it says, can you talk more about the relationship between anxiety and your creation process? Oh, my goodness. Um. <laughs> Can you say it again, Allie? Wait, let me look. Sure, it says, can you talk more about the relationship between anxiety and your creation process? <laughs> Such a good question. Um, I feel like um, I've, I've, because I live with anxiety, I've studied the mind from such a, um, acute angle for 26 years. I mean, I've been dealing with this stuff. And I've studied the mind through through so many different lenses, um, through the lens of Buddhist meditation, through the lens of um, Jewish mysticism, through the lens of um, yoga and just so many other modalities that I've explored and trained in some of them and um yeah and so it's like this uh it's a very my work is is very spiritual to me in terms of like it feels like um like like I'm connecting to myself in a way that I don't allow myself to in normal life, um, in regular life, in life outside of the studio. Um, there's, a, there's a permission in the studio that I give myself. There are no rules. Um, and that I think for somebody who is a highly sensitive person, like 
I'm very empathic, I'm very feely, very, um, I'm very much somebody who is affected by the world and affected very, very deeply by anyone's suffering or pain in general. Um, so the opportunity to be able to step into a studio space and create, it's like, it's like, it's the one place where I am safe. It's the one place where the rules that apply in our society, in our structure, don't apply <laughs> and I can be free. And um, so I think that's the biggest gift for sure. Um, I think being able to create my own worlds and, and like continue to just allow myself to, I'm one of the things that I really wanna work on in my work is loosening up. I have this tendency to really like, I'm very loose at the beginning and then I, and then I um, go tighter and tighter and tighter with more detail and more detail and more detail. And I think some of that is like what Mars was alluding to when, when they were talking about um, how like there's like humans and nature or technology and nature, man and nature. Um, I feel like in my own work, there's this kind of conversation between like the intuitive kind of gestural um, organic pure spontaneous expression and then there's this other aspect that is more um, didactic and and measured and slow and precise and so like just those two different qualities are the different qualities that we bump into when we're being organic, natural, messy humans, and we're living in a structure that is, um, you know, very rigid and supposed to, we're supposed to fit within that. And so I, you know, I think most of my anxiety comes from like not really, um, fitting into the the world that I'm in whether it's when I was a kid I felt that way um and as an adult I think like the ability to create a life where I am living um from a place of freedom and uh that I get to do this um every day is like the biggest gift and it also allowed me to figure out how to how to have trust and faith in myself and in my work and in the universe and in abundance and um, to really hone my craft and take the time to do that and um, yeah I just I want I I want the work to to live on um, into the world as uh, as a witness to my um, exploration of being human really is what it is for me. So I don't know what I just... <laughs> no, I think that's a really interesting insight into what's going on in your head in the studio. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. If anyone has any final questions, you can feel free to ask them now for any of the three artists. All right, I guess we're all ready to wrap up then. Um, thanks everyone for coming. We hope to see you at your, our next Fresh From The Studio. We do these once a month with three artists. Um, it was really great to have the three of you here today and hear about your very different practices and see a little bit of your work in action. Um, so thanks again to the three artist presenters and to everyone else who joined us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Much. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>